Today I'd like to talk about the shape of therapeutic quality gemstones. Do they really have a difference in how they affect you and how they are able to work in your energy field? And the answer? Absolutely yes. Shape is huge. It makes all the difference in the world. So here we have a therapeutic gemstone sphere with its drill hole. A gemstone sphere is going to radiate its energies in all directions. If you wear spheres in a necklace, you're most likely to get your aura completely filled in an even, evenly distributed way of the, with the gemstone energies. This is called a rondelle shape. Basically, it's a sphere that's a little flattened. Rondelles are particularly found in the more precious gemstones, and for very good reason because a rondelle maximizes how much gemstone you can get out of the crystal and so it keeps the cost down and it's also the most efficient use of the original the source crystal. And so the gemstone is drilled usually down the middle and you'll have a, you'll have a string of, of rondelles um, if it's strung in, into an, a necklace. And what happens here is that the emphasis of the gemstone's rays, the gem rays that are broadcasting from the necklace, the emphasis is going to be on the side with the most diameter. So you can see there's a lot more emphasis coming out here than there is here. But when you wear the rondelles together in a necklace, you have all of these rondelle energies coming outward, and the effect is very similar to what you would have if you were wearing a necklace of spheres. So the difference is really not that great. The problem that I see with some poorly cut rondelles is that they're very, very skinny, and sometimes they're almost... Um, the edges are almost sharp, and this just feels uncomfortable. Um, and what happens here is that you just have the energy going very much in one direction, and very little coming out this direction. And this direction tends to be very pointed, and it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to wear. Uh, gemstones like this if you're, if you're looking for a healing, uplifting effect. Another common shape is a chip. I didn't draw this very well, but you know what? Chips are... they come in all different shapes. There are no two chips that are alike. And let's say this particular chip is drilled here. And what's going to happen is Again, wherever there's the longest diameter, you're going to have the longest broadcast of the gem rays. And what you might be already sensing here is that there's some irregularity. And in fact, that is the problem with chips. There is irregularity. And so when you're wearing a necklace of chips, sometimes that irregularity can be beneficial if you're looking to churn up energies and to, um, to get them agitated. But if you're trying to get the most healing property of a gemstone, if you're trying to get the true essence of the gemstone without all this interference, I'd much prefer a rounded shape, like a rondelle or a sphere, over a chip. Now, aquamarine is one of the gemstones that is typically used in chip form simply because it's a very expensive gemstone and the, um, the chip form is just more available at a re more reasonable price. So, the effect of an aquamarine chip is that with all of these... Oops, <laughs> I lose the pen of my, my the cap of my pen. With all of these aquamarine energies going in all these different directions, it can stimulate the body to be more aware, because that's the 
essential effect of the aquamarine to heighten the awareness, to turn on the flashlight of your of your awareness and, and open that flashlight so that you can see more about what's going on in, in your world. Well, if you're wearing aquamarine that is rounded in some way where this these gem rays are being broadcast more evenly, then there's you're able to relax more into the awareness. It's not the energy of, oh, I need to know, I need to know. It's, oh, that's what it is. The awareness comes more like a very gradual, gentle awakening. All right, here's another good example. Citrine also is very commonly made into chips. And what happens here is that citrine has this natural ability to unwind tension in the body. It's really a very, very special, very lovely effect. When you're wearing citrine in the chip form, this unwinding is going to be on a much um, larger gross scale. When you wear citrine in either sphere or rondelle form, that unwinding is able to be more fine-tuned. Therefore, it can go deeper. Um, when an individual has anything going on, and they're upset in, in the stomach or there's inflammation in, in the stomach region, actually the citrine chips can be irritating to that because citrine also has an affinity with the digestive processes in the body. So in that case, I would e wouldn't even go near citrine, but citrine rondelles can help to very gently unwind the tension that might be causing that distress so that the body is able to heal itself more easily. Another example of chips very common is green tourmaline. Green tourmaline is a gemstone that has the ability to balance masculine energies and is typically used by men to help them feel more, maybe more athletic, to bring forward their masculinity. Well, the thing is with the chip form, if you wear chips of green tourmaline, that energy is going to be very stimulating and perhaps more so than is in balance for that individual. It could stimulate masculine tendencies that may not be as desirable, but in the rounded form of green tourmaline, you don't have any of that. In fact, we like to put rounded green tourmaline with other colors of green tourmaline so that different frequencies of masculine energy can be brought forward and nourished. So it's very, very nice. Very nice. So that the, the wearer gets a spectrum of green tourmaline frequencies and also the blossoming of that masculine energy and the balancing of the feminine comes more naturally. Okay. Now another shape that we very often see is, and there are many different kinds of faceted gemstones, and I'm trying to draw some facets here many different shapes. They're round, square, rectangle, but the idea is the same for all of them. In a faceted gemstone, the facets determine the direction of the gemstone's power, let's say. The gem rays are going to be very definitely moving in the direction of the facets, and the facets at the bottom of the crystal are the engine that pushes the gem rays out. And so actually with a faceted gemstone, the rays coming out of the facets are particularly strong. The thing is, you don't have to worry if your faceted gemstone or the diamond ring you got for your wedding or the faceted gems that you may be wearing in jewelry, my gosh, what if they're irradiated or, 
oh my gosh, what if they're not therapeutic? Is that going to hurt me? Well, no, because the thing is, with faceted gemstones, as soon as you mount them in metal, there's a little mounting, <laughs> as best I can draw here, it becomes a cage. And here we have, let's say, the ring. Um, again, pardon my art. But the point is that metal cages a faceted gemstone's energies. And so that what is radiated is almost minimal with a faceted gemstone. You're not getting very much radiating at all. It's something that you wear for its its presence, what it means to you, and the, the sheer beauty of, of some of these faceted stones. So if you're looking to work with gemstones that have a therapeutic value, work with ones that are spherical, rondelle, or rounded in any form, because those are the ones that are going to give you the best therapeutic value.